Well, how are you go guys? Welcome to Get Out and Explore UK. I hope you can hear me okay. Uh, it's a little bit of an experiment. I've got a GoPro Hero 5 Black uh, and I've just purchased the uh, audio equipment to plug into it. I haven't got one of the sort of whatever you call them, the cat bums microphone wind cover things yet that's on order that should be arriving sort of tomorrow or the next day but I thought I'd give it a go see how bad the wind noise is so this is a bit of a test really but I'm hoping to do a lot more moto vlogging um, I mean my channel is mainly consisted of sort of four by four in and wild camping that kind of stuff but it's all about getting out and exploring the UK really um, I've only just done my CBT uh, in the UK just the um, your basic bike training and um, that allows me to ride a up to a 125 cc for two years without doing anything else but if I don't do anything else, after two years I've got to redo my CBT again. Because I'm one of the old buggers at 46. Um, it's slightly different for the youngsters, sort of 16, 17. They can only move up to, I think it's a 250. Um, until they're a certain age and then they can move up and start doing their full bike licenses. But I, because of my age that gives me a little bit of um, leeway so I can do what's known as a direct access course. Uh, so that's what I'm planning on doing. I've got to go and do my theory and hazard protection test first. That's coming up on the uh, 12th of August. So fingers crossed I pass both of those. And then I can move on to do my direct access course, which isn't cheap. Uh, I think it's a four day course is £585. No guarantee to pass. But, um, you know, if you don't pass your mod one, then you don't even get to go on to your mod two. Um, so hopefully I shall pass both of those. Because I've already bought my next bike. So that's just sat there waiting for me. Um, it's a, a 2003 VN or Kawasaki VN800 Classic. Uh, it's not going to stay as a Classic. At the moment it's got lots of lights and baggage and all sorts of bits and pieces that it just doesn't need. Um, so I'm thinking for the rest of this season I'm just going to take off the saddlebags and the lights, uh, replace a couple of bits because whoever the last person was that owned it bought cheap and it looks cheap so they're going to come off get replaced and then the rest of this season I'm going to basically enjoy it for what it is then maybe over the winter months I'm going to have the help of a, a really good friend a brother from another mother um, who's bobbered quite a few VN800s in his time so that's what I'm looking at doing is bobbering mine out taking off all of the unnecessary faff and um, making it look smart a bit more aggressive but um, all my American friends over there would class the 800 as a, a beginner's bike probably um, but over here it's a, a decent size um, people mainly go for the old sports bikes over here um, but I'm more of your cruiser I'm not built for speed anymore come on fella make up your mind where you're going oh my life you can tell it's tourist season tourist season in Tor Bay everybody loses the ability to drive I'm going to go up there and that's the other good thing about being on a bike is you get to take little shortcuts well, you call them shortcuts Yeah. 
Yeah, Tor Bay is one of those tourist destinations in in the UK. Uh, it's a lovely place to live. Unfortunately, a lot of the uh, places are closing down now. Um, and the COVID-19 has taken its toll on the holiday industry as a whole. Um, so there's a lot of unemployment down there at the moment. The seasonal jobs that would normally be there just aren't there anymore. Um, hotels are closing. Um, but it's just the way of the world at the moment. I'm kind of lucky in the, the industry that I'm in. I'm in engineering and uh, the company that I work for The company that I work for, we make a lot of parts for motorsport. Um, motorsport, although the F1 stopped for a while, um, it's back on and running again now. So we've got a, a lot of companies that are ordering parts again, ready for next year's testing. But even I've been affected by it. I would normally work a full week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, but I'm currently only in on a Wednesday to Friday at the moment just to try and thin out the members of staff so that we're not all crawling over each other and we can keep the two metre distance so we're not quite getting all the work done that we normally would but uh, we're getting some work done and we're getting some orders in which is always good um, I mean obviously the financial side of things I don't get to see any of that that's down to the bosses and the owners I'm not interested in that as long as I get a wage packet at the end of the month enough to pay the bills enough to put some juice into this and my truck but um, yeah I've got to admit I'm thoroughly enjoying being on a bike I should have done this many 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 years ago um, I kind of got Covid to thank for it to be honest um, because we weren't allowed to go out anywhere um, no essential uh, nothing other than essential travel I suddenly realized how much my truck was costing me each month in fuel because um, although I wasn't working I was actually saving money so I thought do you know what I'm gonna look into getting myself a bike because I can cut through the traffic a lot easier and uh, it's a lot cheaper to run and at the moment on this 125 I worked out the other day I'm getting 106 miles per gallon compared to my truck which is only 24 <laughs> it's a huge difference um, yesterday I went out with a couple of friends of mine good friends Twitch and Stuart we went out on a 150 mile bike ride around Cornwall uh, met up in Totnes moved on to Tavistock, stopped for a quick cup of coffee after driving over the moors. Um, from there, from Tavistock we went over to Tintagel. Uh, the idea was to see the castle but um, none of us have ever been there before. Didn't realise that the castle is um, quite a walk from the nearest car park and us being well, two of us being fat buggers and one of us being a racing snake. That's not me, by the way. Um, decided not to do that, so we just had a cup of coffee there at the King Arthur's Caf. And um, we went from Tintagel, stay there. We went from Tintagel through Bodmin down to Lou Bay. Uh, we got there too late for coffee everywhere was shutting down six o'clock in the evening um, Stuart and myself were feeling a little bit peckish so we thought on our route home we would include a place called Captain Jasper's over on the Barbican in Plymouth great food and it's a great biker place uh, a lot of bikers meet up down there um, you get everything from scooters Harleys 125s trikes you name it it all goes down there and everybody's really friendly um, and you can, like I said you can get some lovely food and a nice cup of coffee so we had that 
and then we moved it on back through Totnes and we all sort of parted waves then but what a cracking day out um, a lot of people think that 125s can't produce the power and what have you I'll tell you what okay you know they do struggle going up the hills a bit you know um, but I was 50 60 mile an hour no problems at all and there's all A's and B routes you know that me I purposely picked a route that didn't include dual carriageways because I didn't want to be screaming the bum end out of my bike all the way so it was all A's and B routes and it was lovely it was a great day out Twitch has got the um, the VN800 uh, it, his one wasn't the classic he hasn't got the big forks on the front like mine um, but he has got the highway hawk exhaust which give the bike a lovely tone um, that's one of the things that I'm going to be wanting to do is swap the standard exhausts because they're a bit on the quiet side I'm going to swap the standard exhaust over and I'm looking at fitting either Vance and Hines or the Highway Hawks maybe a set of Cobras um, just something to beef up the uh, the exhaust tone you know just um, announce to all the other traffic that you're behind them and you want to come through let the um, the pedestrians that are head fixed inside their mobile phones let them know to look up and see what's coming before they cross the road that kind of thing as they keep saying you know loud pipes save lives and I think it's definitely true but yeah this is um, where I live a little place called Tor Bay it's a little bay you've got Torquay over there Preston just behind us Paynton and Brixham I said it's a lovely tourist destination. Brixham's a fishing village. Uh, one of the, you know, it's a huge, not huge, but it's a very, very busy fishing port. Painting's just painting. Not much you can say about painting. Um, I mean, it's great. It's got the painting pier. It's got arcades. It's got all the touristy stuff. Torquay's nice. It's one of the main beaches. You got two Ivy Meadows just over there and the Torquay Rugby. I used to play there myself many, many, many moons ago, back when I was fit and I had a waist and instead of a gravitational pull. You've got to be a bit careful on this bit because it's although it's a two-width road, some cars along here decide that they're actually driving a bus and they want all of it and then you get pedestrians walking along the middle suddenly think oh we'll go for that gap and they don't realize a the bike's there and of course whose fault is it when you hit them oh, couldn't be the pedestrian surely oh here we go yeah we got a, a lot of students a lot of foreign students they come over here to learn the English language um, we get a lot of them down they stay in the uh, residence houses obviously the residents get money for it whatever. I think it's called EF language schools they tend to sort most of it out but yeah I thought I'd come out and have a little bimble test out the microphone see how good it works see how much it catches the wind and then obviously once the um, the cat's foot or the cat's bum wind deflector whatever it's called once that arrives I'm going to put that on and um, see how much different it is compare the two so yeah look out for that video as well because that's going to be the next one in the row um, it might even be the first one if the microphone quality on this one's rubbish but um, yeah it's um, it's something I've wanted to do for a while obviously like I said you know my channel is mainly uh, 4x4 and camping, wild camping 
exploring the UK but I think I can probably explore the UK better on a bike to be fair um, you know going to different towns and villages and having a mooch around um, the trucks quite big so finding the parking space can be quite difficult at times whereas with a motorbike you've got a lot of freedom I'm going to look into doing some motorbike camping as well once I get my full license and I've got the bigger bike I can actually carry some load because um, although I'm going to take the saddlebags off of the VN800 I'm going to keep them see if I can incorporate them into my bobber design so that I can have the bike as a bobber just for showing off pretending to be cool and then when I want to go camping I can put the saddlebags on I can throw the tarp in the side I can throw the um, either a ground mat, sleeping bag, hammock, that kind of bits and bobs in. I can uh, find somewhere to have a, an evening dinner and then I can go off and um, set my camp up, which I've kind of got down a fine art now. It only takes me probably 10 15 minutes to set a camp. It doesn't bother me if it's dark because I've got plenty of torch. What are you doing, you plank? See what I mean? Tourists. Um, yeah, you've got to love the tourists. You know, they pay people's wages. They're, they're welcome. It's nice to see them back after a long stay away. We always have a bit of a laugh and a joke down here with the, about the tourists, you know, we'd like them to get to the sign that says welcome to Devon and we'd like them just to throw their money in a pot and bugger off again. Because <laughs> we don't get to enjoy Tor Bay in the full sun without it being mega busy. You know, we get to go to the pubs and stuff when they're quiet, but by the time you get to the pub, you're piss wet through because it's in the winter season, in the summer season you don't want to go to the pubs because they're packed and you've got to wait 25 minutes to get a beer and it's expensive so I think anyway I think I've waffled on and bored the pants off of most people by now so I'm going to end this video and say thank you for watching and um, yeah hopefully I shall I don't know, maybe I'll do another video in a minute. I don't know. That's the freedom that bike gives you. You can go where you want, do where you want, say what you want. But yeah, thank you for listening to my first moto vlog. Uh, first of many more to come, I'm hoping. Thanks again, guys. Stay safe. And don't forget, get out there and explore.